Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today, we're going to be solving the lead code question, find all duplicates in an array. Okay, so in this question, we're given an array of integers 1 all the way up to the size of the array. So if we have a size of 5, we're going to have the numbers 1 through 5. So some of the elements appear twice and others appear once. And we need to find all the elements which appear twice and that's what we want to return. So in this question, we want to do it without any extra space and we want to do it in big O and runtime. Okay, so let's just take a look at this input that we're given over here and the output to this is 2 comma 3. Let's see how we can derive that. Okay, so this is the same list as the example. We have 4, 3, 2, 7, 8, 2, 3, 1. And what we're going to do is instead of uh, explain, explaining it to you, I want to just go step by step and I think you can understand as I'm doing it. So what we're going to do is we're first going to find out what the length is of our array. And the length in this case is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we have a length of 8. And what that means is we the array is only going to consist of numbers 1 through 8. These are the only numbers that we're going to find inside of our array. And finally, let's also make a results uh, list. And this is what we're going to return at the end of it. Okay, so our first step is we're going to iterate through each of the elements only one time. And what we're going to do is, so first we're going to go to the first element. We're going to take its absolute value. So in this case, the absolute value of 4 is 4. And we're going to subtract it by 1. So 4 minus 1 is 3. And we're going to go to the index of whatever value that is. So let me just write the index of each of these numbers real quick. Okay, so over here we got the number 3. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the third index, so 0, 1, 2, 3, and that has a value of 7. What we're going to do over here is we're going to take that value and multiply it by negative 1. So we're going to do 7 multiplied by negative 1, and that gives us negative 7. And we're going to replace that by negative 7. So this 7 over here becomes negative 7 now. So the purpose of this will be, we'll understand the purpose of doing this really soon. Okay, so now we're going to go to the next number. So over here, we have the number 3. And we're going to repeat the same steps. Take the absolute value of 3. So we're going to get 3. We're going to subtract that by 1, and we get 2. So now we're going to go to the second index. So 0, 1, 2. That's the number 2. And we're going to multiply that by negative 1. So over here, we have 2. Over here, we have the number negative 2, so we're going to take its absolute value, which is 2 minus 1, which equals to 1. Now we're going to go to the first index, and that has a value of 3. We're going to multiply that by negative 1, and we're going to get the value negative 3. Okay, now again, we go to the next element, which in this case has a value of negative 7, but we're going to take its absolute value, so we get 7 minus 1, which is equal to 6. Now we're going to go to the 6th index, which is this, and we're going to take that number, whatever, and we're going to multiply it by negative 1. So it becomes negative 3. And finally, we have, we go to the next number, which is 8. So we take uh, the absolute value of 8, 8 minus 1, which equals to 7. So we go to the 7th index, multiply that by negative 1, and we're going to get the value negative 1. Okay, but over here, we're going to understand the purpose of why we're doing this. So finally, once we reach the next number, so we go to this number over here, which is the number 2. And if you notice, we've already found the number 2. The number 2 has already been repeated once. So this is the second time it's coming. And how do we know that? So let's do the same steps as before. So we're going to go to the number 2, take its absolute value, so we get 2, then we do 2 minus 1, and we get a value of 1. And now we're going to go to the first index over here. And when we go to the first index, whatever number is at the first index is less than 0. And whenever a number is less than 0, that means that we've already visited the number. So just to be a little bit more clear, so the first time, so this number used to be just 3, positive 3. But 
when we first found the number two, which is over here, then we went to the, so we went to whatever is at the index of two minus one and multiplied it by negative one. And when we multiply by negative one, it's kind of a marker saying, hey, we already visited this number one time. And when we went found to the second time, which is over here, and then we visited this number again, when that happened, we, the number was already negative. And since it was already negative, we know that we have visited the number at least once. So this means that two has been repeated. So we're going to add this to our results array. So we're going to add the two over here. Similarly, when you go to the next number, which in this case has a value of negative three, we're going to take its absolute value, which is three, minus one, which equals to two. Now we're going to go to the second index over here, and that number is negative two. Negative two is also less than zero, which means we have already visited the number three. So in that case, we're going to add our number three over here. And if you still did not understand it, let me just explain it one last time quickly. So we have, so if we first came across the number three over here. When we came across the number three, we did three minus one, went to the second index, so which is the number two, and we multiplied that by negative one, giving it a value of negative two. And when we found a number three again, which is over here, when we visited the number at three minus one index, which is the index of two, at that point, the number was already negative, meaning that we have visited the number previously, and thus we added that to our results. And finally, for the last number, we have a negative one. So we're gonna take its absolute value, which is one, one minus one is equal to zero. So now we're going to go to the zeroth index, we're going to multiply this number by negative one so we get negative four but it doesn't matter since that's the last number and this is how we're going to find out whether a number is repeated or not so now let's look at how we can do this using code all right so to solve this it's going to be pretty simple we're going to start off by initializing our results array so it's going to start off with an empty array now we're going to iterate through each of our numbers so for num and nums Okay, so now that we have this, we're going to change our num value to its absolute value. So num is gonna be the absolute value of num. Now we're going to have an if condition. And what this if condition is gonna do is, we're going to go to the index of the numbers value minus one. And in order to do that, you're gonna do nums, then we're gonna take the value of num minus one. So we're going to go to whatever is at that index. And we're going to put this in an if statement. So if whatever is at that number, if it's greater than zero, then in that case, we're going to multiply that number by negative one and make it negative in order to mark that we have visited this number at least once. So nums, and then we go to the value of num minus one, and we're going to multiply that by negative one. So to do that, you just do this. Okay. And now we're going to have an else statement. So if this is not the case, and if the value is less than zero, that means that we've already visited that number. And this is the second time that we're visiting that. And in that case, we're going to append this number to our results. So results.append, and we're going to append the number. Okay, and that should be it for our answer. And once we're done with this, we're going to go outside of our for loop, and we're going to return our results return ouch return okay so now let's submit our code and as you can see our solution did get accepted and finally thanks a lot for watching guys do let me know if you have any feedback and don't forget to like and subscribe thank you